Oh, hello everyone. Let's have a go at executive today. I think I might have fixed my focusing problem and for those of you who are interested, I took off auto stabilization. So that's looking good. Oh, anyway, I'm over to here. What do I think executive means? That's what I think it means. It's dismay at how money has or profiteers have been allowed to destroy traditional England. Um, they're just making a profit at the expense of the rest of us and the traditional values of the company. And these are the methods I plan to talk about. Ooh, hugely about voice and the fallible narrator. A lot of and throw in the old conversational style there. I'm going to talk about types. I'm going to mention rhyme and rhythm, but not very much. Setting, irony and rhyme. There you are. If I were you, I'd pause the video and tick off that you've got those areas, I think. Or maybe do it at the end. And I am now moving on in my high-tech way. Consider this to be a kind of merge with the next scene. There it is. And look, that's what AQA said because I wrote it on. Oh, you can't get anything about this poem on Google. You're relying on me and AQA. And it said it was a satirical challenge. I think I wrote an unreliable narrator, to be honest. So I'm just going to put my notes. It is still doing that zoom in and out thing. I think it's better. Just popping my notes over there so I can remember. Very annoyed at the zoom. It's actually a brand new phone. So now, the first of all, in order to criticise what's going on um, in England and English towns, um, he chooses this types, and I'm suggesting to you that the the apprentice, everyone hates everyone in the apprentice, those young executive wannabes, that's the type that Betjamin is conjuring here. And yep, hate him. So just that, using this type. Right, so you imagine Betjamin, I want to criticise how these um, soulless, money-making, self-aggrandising executives are ruining our towns and our country and our heritage. Do you know, I'm going to be one of them. I'm going to actually write as one of them. So that's choice number one. So this executive... My, so I'm still being Betjamin. The executive is really pleased and think what they're doing is brilliant. But of course, I hate it and my readers hate it. And because the executive is so pleased, it makes it sound even worse. I think it could be time to go to the end of the poem. Um, so he sounds so pleased with himself. If some preservationist attempts to interfere, a dangerous structure notice from the, budget, from the borough engineer will settle any buildings that are standing in our way. The modern style, sir, with respect, has really come to stay. Very pleased with himself that he can bribe the borough engineer to put a, a dangerous structure notice on anything, on anything and get it knocked down. And something about the rhyme here, that... It's very final. It's very smug. He's very pleased with himself. It's ironic. It's a fallible narrator. We think it's disgusting, presumably. Well, Betjamin wants us to think it is. Presumably he did as well. And a little bit of extra irony here. Betjamin was a campaigner. He was a preservationist. And he did attempt to interfere at the knocking down of buildings like St Pancras Station in London. Um, so it, that's a sort of joke from Betjamin calling himself some preservationist. And also the, uh, this is getting very complicated, isn't it? The executive himself thinking we're all with him in how fantastic it is that he can bribe his way into knocking every good building down. Whereas in fact, we're actually horrified. So and if there's anyone born to make us hate them, and he's got an Aston Martin, and he's got a speedboat. And he talks about birds. Where have they gone? Birds, birds, birds. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. Dismissive tone for other people. So his type is... And, and I think we all recognise it. 
what we do especially since about 50 years later, we've got The Apprentice. Um, part of the boast is, uh, sorry, part of the voice. So I own a speedboat that's never touched the water. She's built a fiberglass. Of course, what else would one speedboat be made of wood? So that's the boast in which creates the voice. Um, I think he set it in a in a bar. And this person's standing boasting at a bar about everything he does. And so where is it? It says, no soda, please, just plain. Um, whatever spirit it is he's drinking. Um, and he's, how did I acquire her? He's actually talking to somebody at, like the poet at the bar. And how did I acquire her? You asked me. And um, so we've got this conversational boasting and complete lack of shame and, and real enjoyment of the way he can get around any planning law and bribe all the officials of a town. Um, what else gives him his voice and makes him sound even more despicable? You could, if you want, write about... Um, where's that bloody Cortina? There it is. You could write about the glib and flippant... Shall I write them here? Make sure you know these words. Glib. It's quite hard to write. Because it's on a on a slope. Anyway, I managed it there. Oop, oop, there. Glib and flippant tone is increased by um to knock him down. Well, obviously we're on his uh, um yeah, I think I've said everything, you know. What do you think? I mean, people write very well about the ridiculous not caring about the um the people that get run over wherever they've gone. Oh yeah. It was a bit of comic exaggeration there. It's going on about how choosing to be actually one of the enemy, in a way, or one of the people he despises, increases the impact of his dismay about the destruction of traditional England. Well, I hope that worked for you. Goodbye.